from high atop Wallace Wade Stadium here tonight in Durham, North Carolina. I'm Tim Priester with Tim O'Malley. And it's number 11, Notre Dame, at number 17, Duke. Tim, we picked up some news. It was on Irish Illustrated Overtime. We already had bad news about Notre Dame's wide <laughs> yeah. receiving core. We have uh, further bad news. Yeah, it's exacerbating the situation, really. Jaden Greathouse is not expected to play, but that, of course, comes on the heels of Jaden Thomas is not going to play or is not expected to play. He has basically been ruled out. And Deion Colsey also had knee surgery this week. So there's three receivers down after Matt Salerno was also a re wide receiver loss much earlier this season. You are looking at four out of seven varsity receivers out. Chris Tyree, Tobias Merriweather, and Rico Flores Jr. will be heavily involved in today's proceedings. I was estimating they'll take 99% of the wide receiver snaps. Now, of course, Tim, tight ends and running backs are coming. Well, there's no doubt about it. And we talked about on Irish Illustrated Overtime, our pregame version that uh, Notre Dame's going to have to be creative with their tight ends and their running backs. We speculated that somebody like a, a Holden Stays could play a boundary receiver. Uh, we would imagine that Chris Tyree is more of a field receiver as opposed to a slot. Would they would they call up a, a, a freshman, a walk-on freshman slot receiver? Maybe, maybe not. Would they do some special things with somebody like Jeremiah Love, who we talked about a lot during the recruiting process of being a receiver or a guy that could line up a receiver? So. Notre Dame's in a little bit of a bind, but we do believe that Notre Dame has the edge on both lines of scrimmage. And I would imagine, especially with the, the uh, success that Notre Dame had running the football last week against Ohio State, that they will rely heavily on 12 and 13 personnel and run the football a lot. And you mentioned advantage on the line of scrimmage. We believe Graham Barton, the left tackle for Duke, will also be out. That is late breaking news for the Blue Devils fans. That changes things a little bit as well because it is a quality offensive line, but Notre Dame needs a little help in his pass rush game in terms of getting Jordan Botello back. You know, I thought they rushed the passer well until the Ohio State game. They just weren't getting the sacks. I did yeah. not think they rushed the passer well against no, Ohio not. State. And this is a game where if you could get Riley Leonard out of his comfort zone, make him get rid of the ball a little bit quicker, the play doesn't break down, and he doesn't make as many plays with his legs because I think the killers are, as you mentioned, I believe, on our podcast, it's not the design runs for Riley Leonard. I mean, he can hurt you there too. But it's when he gets away, everything breaks down, and third and seven becomes a 14-yard game. I think you have a, a – I don't want to say exact, but a similar approach to yeah. what you did three weeks ago with Brennan Armstrong of NC State. You have to make sure that your defensive linemen stay in their pass rush lanes. You're going to bring some blitzes from the second level. You're going to have to play good coverage on the back end, but Notre Dame's particularly at cornerback are in a position to do that. Sam Hartman has to have a good right. day. I, I, you know, we speculate on Irish Illustrated overtime that it's 75% somewhere in that vicinity he needs to be. Throw the ball to the tight ends, throw the ball to the running backs. Look, you don't have to you don't have to cave in completely because you're missing some right, receivers, right. but you have to make some adjustments in order to maximize the weapons that you do have available. Or as you mentioned, a receiver can make a play for you as well. Tobias Merriweather can make a couple plays today. That would have, that would change things greatly for the Irish offense. I think it would open up the running game. Holden stays, whether he's the boundary, the inline tight end, or just doing what he normally does best. Holden stays will be part of this. Mitch Evans, they'll be targeting those tight ends more than 10 times. And you said Jeremiah Love's name. Jeremiah Love, the second running back, is what I'm interested in seeing most tonight. Whether he splits out wide or goes to the slot twice is not as important to me as I want to see Jeremiah Love get those 10 carries because he certainly looked the part. Maybe you keep working Janarian Price in and those guys are all important because Audra Kestime is the bell cow and he needs more than 14 carries tonight too. It cer certainly looks like a lower scoring game under the circumstances and Notre Dame has to do a good job of containing Riley Leonard, certainly. They don't throw the football down the field a whole lot. Their two top receivers are uh, Moore and Calhoun. Good players that are very, very good players. Very good players, yeah. no doubt, and they'll target them a lot, but they're not breakaway threats. So, you know, Notre Dame in, in – uh, some man coverage. Uh, they're certainly in a better position to run man coverage than they were last week, and they did a really nice yeah. job last week against the Ohio State receivers. So it'll be interesting to see how this all develops. They're probably not going to play it as close to the vest as maybe we right. suggest because uh, Marcus Freeman wants to go for it. Um, Jared Parker wants to go for it, even screen passes when he could run the football to, to ice the game. They're going to go for it tonight here in Wallace Wade Stadium. Well, I thought before any of this news broke that Duke's veteran secondary had the edge on Notre Dame's young and depleted receiving core. More so now, I thought Notre Dame's cornerbacks had the edge on Duke's wide receivers and Riley Leonard passing game. More so now, maybe when the left tackle's out. So when you say under, I agree. You say under, I say how much. I, th I think that's what this game is looking at now. The key is, if Notre Dame is even, maybe minus one in turnovers. If they're even, Notre Dame's winning the football game. If they're minus one, as long as it's not a 
calamitous turnover. They actually win the football game. But there's a reason you brought this up a couple times this week. It's not happenstance. Mike Elko's teams create turnovers. Notre Dame could create some today, too, to kind of even that out. That's it for our instant analysis pregame. Check, check out our postgame instant analysis and Irish Illustrated Overtime.